Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here. Hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. Uh, for today's video, we are going to go through one free agency prediction for every NBA team. So basically, I'm going to say if this prediction does make sense, doesn't make sense, or maybe there's some better options out there. Now, if you guys could do me a quick favor before we get going on this video, and please drop a like on this one. Only takes a second of your time. It really makes the biggest of differences over here on my channel here, guys. Thank you all so much for that. And yeah, as always, give me your thoughts and predictions on all these different things going on in the comment section below. And here we go, man. So the first one we have is expected moves. Um, we have the Washington Wizards will decline Jabari Parker's $20 million option. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is that like, I wish they were able to do that and then sign Jabari back for a cheaper price. But if I'm Jabari Parker and you decline my $20 million and you want me to play for cheaper, uh, I would be kind of pissed off about that. But it does make sense because, yes, Jabari Parker was very nice for them. Looks uh, like he had, what, 15.7 rebounds, 2 to 3 assists per game. And um, you got to say that, like, it didn't really lead the W's, though. So maybe that $20 million is better spent elsewhere uh, just because John Wall is out for the season pretty much, at least most of the year, I will say. And uh, that's like $40 million eating up right there. So you got to use whatever cap space available to try to put guys around Bradley Beal. So it does make sense, I guess, from that standpoint. Uh, next up, we have Julius Randle gone. Julius Okafor back for New Orleans. Uh, yes, it sounds like Julius Randle. There's a def definitely a lot of different rumors going out there about uh, different teams he's going to go to and the best fits out there. Now, I like the idea of him teaming up with D'Lo on the Nets. I think that would be really interesting to see. Uh, meanwhile, Julius Okafor does have a team option, and he was really good for the team last season, man. Like, we all thought Julius was going to fall off. No, like, he got himself a small contract, got himself a chance out there. And hopefully you can repeat that next year, man, because it would suck for him to, like, fall off and not be able to get another contract as opposed to, you know, having the same type of year and then being able to sign a bit of a bigger one out there. Uh, next up, we have OKC Thunder bargain hunting for a shooter. Yes, this team does not have a ton of cap space. And, uh, yeah, it says right there, JJ Redick, that's the one point I really want them to get. But the fact of the matter is that they do not have a lot of salary cap, man, like, between Stephen Adams, Russell, and Paul George, even Andre Roberson, who uh, has like $10 million a season, Dennis Schroeder's contract, not a lot to work with there. But I do think that there is, you know, somebody like a Wayne Ellington or a Wesley Matthews or just somebody that would be a bit cheaper that would fit that position nicely. Really what they need out there is they need consistency because there is guys that can shoot on the team like Abrinas, uh, Terrence Ferguson, those guys can shoot, just not consistently for the squad. So they can do that, man. I think they definitely makes the biggest difference in the world. Here we have Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, Jonas Valachunas picks up his $17.6 million option. Yeah, I don't see why he wouldn't do that. I mean, I don't really see teams shelling out that much money for Jonas anymore. Uh, just because, like, the type of center he is, it's not really the greatest for this era of the NBA. Like, yeah, he'll still put up numbers no matter what team he goes to, but not for that money right there. So it's good for him. And then after yeah, the season, he's about $18 million richer. And uh, he can just kind of stay with the squad for now and see what happens if he ends up starting for the team alongside, you know, Jaron Jackson. That's fine. He'll have a chance to really put up nice numbers in a, in a uh, contract year and then go from there. It's not like he's old. Not like he's really fighting for a championship spot right now. Um, he's only 26, so I would take the $18 million if I was him. That completely makes sense to me. Next up, we have the Miami Heat wave. Ryan Anderson and still pay him $15.6 million dollars so it says the heat can keep anderson this season and pay him 21.2 million or waive him bajai for uh 10th and end up footing a 15.6 million dollar bill that does make sense i mean the cap situation for the heat they're paying all these old guys all this money out they're not saying like his sign's extremely old but just really not a great fit for the team anymore goran Dragic, he's a fine player not a 19 million dollar point guard anymore though at least not for the miami heat uh so yeah anderson you save a little bit of money right there. It's not like he was going to be in the rotation anyway. So if you can save the $6 million and use that to sign somebody that can help the squad out. Sure, why not, man? Makes sense to me. We have more than the likely to happen. The Pacers get the band back together. I think that makes sense. You know, this season they went 40, they had 48 wins on the season. Um, the season four with Victor Oladipo completely healthy, they had 48 wins. Victor Oladipo missed a lot of the season, man. The fact is they were able to get to the playoffs. They were able to win the same amount of games without their all-star shooting guard. You put him back on there, chemistry is going to work itself out and everything like that, and they'll be great. Now, I will say, um, don't bring the complete band back together. I do think they could use an improvement at the point guard spot. And maybe even eventually decide between Miles Turner and Sabonis because I don't think there's any sense of having both those guys on this team. 
and I feel like there's some trade value there to one of those guys. I'd say Sabonis would probably be the one that would be traded because uh, Miles Turner has a bit of a larger contract, so Sabonis is more contract-friendly for a team out there willing to do that. Um, so I'd like to see that happen, but I'm sure Pacer fans probably would are all for keeping both those guys, which is also completely fine. Uh, next up, we have the Utah Jazz. Look for upgrades. Bring back Ru Ricky Rubio instead. So it says they're going to try to get some of the big names, but they're just not going to, and it's going to be Rubio. Um, I think their best offer is to try to put together a good trade offer. It says right there, man. Yeah, they tried to get something for Mike Conley. Um, I think that's probably their best bet because, yeah, Kyrie's not going to choose the Jazz. Kemba to the Jazz is interesting. I do like the idea of that dynamic. I just don't know if he would choose them. And then uh, D'Lo, I think he goes back to the Nets regardless anyway. So, yeah, I think the Jazz are probably the odd man out. I just hope they find something. They, they got to make some sort of change. Like Derek Favors, Ricky Rubio, those guys are not the best players for that. Utah Jazz line are not the best players around side. Gobert and Donovan Mitchell, please make a change. Just don't go back with the same exact team. Next up, we have uh, Marcus Saul picks up the 25.6 million player option no matter what. Hell yeah, man, because at this point, Marcus Saul, based off his age and just kind of his output, uh, probably like a an 8 to $10 million center right now, maybe a little bit more, but I know his age is kind of a factor there. So essentially, this one contract could be worth about as much as a two to three year contract for him. So uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's going to come down to, though, if he wants to try to win a championship. And I feel like if he ends up picking up that player option, that honestly could be like a big reason why Kawhi Leonard would leave because he knows that Marcus Saul, who is a fine player, but not going to, you know, get him over the hump all that much, uh, is going to eat up a lot of the salary cap. So it might be hard to improve the team going forward. I know Kyle Lauer is going to be a year older. His contract's not great. Uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting, man. But Marcus Saul, you can't blame us. Like the contract was offered to him. They, they signed those player options for a reason just for cases like this where it's like, yeah, he took a gamble with the Memphis Grizzlies staying with them. And now it's like, okay, well, let's get my money. We have uh, Al Freak Aminu seeks a raise elsewhere. I do like him a lot. His three-point shot, not as good as it could be. But, yeah, since he's only going to be 28, and I know his, I, I really like him for his defense. I feel like he plays that four spot completely perfect out there. Just if you can get that three-point shot up to, like, 38 39%, that would be absolutely pristine. I know it's that, uh, easier said than done to do, of course. Um, but, yeah, man, so I feel like the trailblazers, for them, it makes sense that maybe that's one of the spots they just look to try something else out if they don't end up winning the championship, which I don't think they will, but who knows, man, knock on wood there. So, yeah, I can see him being uh, helpful somewhere else. We have uh, the Timberwolves don't match offer sheet for Tyus Jones. I don't really see why they would. I mean, Jeff Teague is back for a season. Uh, Derrick Rose, I assume they're going to try to get him back. Now, I guess if Derrick Rose does leave and the contract offer is right for Tyus Jones, maybe you do decide to keep him because he knows the system and backup point guards. I mean, you know, I'd rather have a guy that knows the system rather than take a gamble on somebody else. Uh, so I think it depends there, man. I'll, I'll, I'll know what happens with Derrick Rose if they decide to keep Tyus Jones or not. We have, uh, things are getting interesting. Uh, Los Angeles Lakers, no superstar help comes. Man, ugh. I don't know about this one. It depends what your definition of a superstar is. Because I could totally see, like, a Jimmy Butler coming to this team. Klay Thompson, would you consider him a superstar? Now, yeah, they don't end up getting a Kawhi Leonard or a Kevin Durant or a Kyrie Irving. I understand that. They're going to get somebody. I just don't know who it is yet, man. They're going to get somebody to play with LeBron James. Though, and they don't. Because there is no way in hell that this team comes back the way it was constructed last year and starts the NBA season this way. If not, man, I think they're going to offer up everything possible to get Anthony Davis. They got to get somebody to play with LeBron James. If not, it's a complete failure. Uh, next up, we have the Denver Nuggets. Uh, decline team option on Paul Millsap. Yeah, going to be 34, looks like, this season. His three-point shot continues to improve. He's got 37% on 2.3 attempts per game. It's just, I feel like there's probably some better options out there. Like, even Alfred Camunu, <laughs> like we just talked about. Him. I feel like he'd be a nice player to have alongside Jokic. Uh, fact of the matter, though, is like Paul Millsap, while he's a nice player, um, I just don't know if he is the guy that the Denver Nuggets need. I'd rather see them go with the younger option out there. Maybe play Michael Porter Jr. finally because, of course, he'll be back and um, from injury and everything like that and finally get a chance to play here in the NBA. So that'd be interesting. Uh, is Trey Lyles still on the team? I don't know what team Trey Lyles... I, 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 know, I know he was on the Denver Nuggets, I believe, at one point. I don't know if he still is or not, but I like him a lot, man. Uh, I just I forgot about Trey Lyles. I, was, was it the Jazz maybe he was on? I don't know. I just, for some reason, I completely forgot about Trey Lyles. Uh, next up, we have D-Lo re-signs re on a five-year max. Yep, I see this happening. 
no way around it. I think he gets the max contract. And I think he goes back to the Nets. Uh, we have the Detroit Pistons. Tyreek Evans lands a one-year $9.2 million deal. So as a Piston fan, I would be okay with this for him as a starter. I mean, I know we can play anywhere from the one to three spot. And it would be nice to have... Because like I like Wayne Ellington. I like Luke Kennard. I feel like both those guys would probably start on the team. So then it's like, okay, does Tyreek play point guard? So it would be interesting, man. Um, I'm all for getting some guard depth, though, or some forward depth. Or really, a wing player depth in general. Uh, I'm all for that. $9 million, sure, why not? If he, can, if he can go back to his Memphis Grizzlies self, that would be amazing. I don't think that would happen, but I feel like it's a nice veteran player at a pretty cheapest price. We have the Houston Rockets strikeout and free agency forced to wait for buyout markets. I don't know what their cap situation is. I can't imagine between Chris Paul, James Harden, and Clint Capella if they have too much money to spend anyway. Um, they, they'll go out there and get some sort of just like, not like the biggest name free agents, but really, man, like those Trevor Arizas. It says right there, Jeff Greens, Wilson Chandlers of the world. I don't see why they wouldn't come to a team like this. Uh, they go out there, they would get to, like, they would know their exact role. Players love shooting threes now. I don't think they strike out completely. We have a uh, bold, but reasonable. The San Antonio Spurs, Brooke Lopez brings Spurs offense in the 21st century. Ugh. I'm just thinking of a LaMarcus Aldridge, Brooke Lopez uh, front court. And, oh, man. Rest in peace, man. Rest in peace. Like, yeah. I don't want to say... The Spurs do shoot a lot of, like, mid-range shots and stuff like that. But, like, I feel like LaMarcus Aldridge could just be that new Brooke Lopez. Like, just focus solely on shooting threes this offseason and use that money elsewhere. Um... I don't see Brooke Lopez leaving the Bucks. I feel like he's been perfect for them, and he's changed his game, and he's, like, the perfect guy to have alongside Giannis, even if he comes off the bench. Like, why get rid of Brooke Lopez? Uh, next, we have the Milwaukee Bucks. They try for Durant, and Kawhi settle for Chris Middleton on a max contract. The Bucks are not going to get Durant or Kawhi Leonard. Man, I'm not, this is the first I'm hearing of this. Uh, now, Chris Middleton for a max I mean, to be that second option, I wouldn't want to pay him the max contract. I don't like I don't like paying max contracts to guys that are second, third options. But ultimately, I could see that happening. I mean, he's 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 the nice uh, two guy alongside Giannis. But then at that point, you just kind of got to hope that Giannis continues to improve even more, and that's just how the team improves. And hopefully, Brogdon comes back healthy and everything like that. Uh, I would love to see this team get like a Tobias Harris or somebody like that. I feel like that'd be nice. But if it happens, who knows? Chris Milton is going to get paid. It's just a matter by who exactly. Uh, for the Hawks, we have uh, punt on 2019 free agency become go-to destination in 2020. Um, I don't know if you want to say the go-to destination, maybe an attractive destination, because that's pretty much like people are saying right now that like the Nets are the go-to destination just because of some of the young talent they all have out there and some of the uh, contract opportunities that would present themselves to some star players. Um, but there's always going to be the big market teams that are going to be very attractive. Yeah, the Hawks playing with Trey Young and John Collins could be enticing. I wouldn't say the go-to, though, man. It's just a fine option. Although, it really depends until they end up getting in the draft. Like, if they end up striking goal again like Zion, then maybe, yeah, you can make that case. Uh, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers. They trade J.R. Smith for a first-round pick the day before free agency opens. I can't imagine a team giving up a first round pick right now for jr smith so i'm gonna say no bueno on that one for the charlotte hornets uh ken walker and jimmy lamb leave hornets become nba's worst team Whew. this is interesting guys because part of it is because like miles bridges is, a, is a still a few years away so by the time he's ready to go kemba walker is going to be like old so maybe this is for the best man because then of course over the next few seasons the uh Charlotte Hornets continue to tank, or they do tank, I should say, in general. Miles Bridges is a more on, more of a, on a cycle with, you know, the next draft pick, whoever that would be. Uh, they still have Malik Monk, guys like that gets opportunities. And they, it kind of excels how good they can become a lot quicker. I don't know, man, but I could totally see Kemba Walker staying with the franchise. Like, he seems very loyal. Jeremy Lamb, I think, is probably gone, though. Next up, we have uh, the takes are getting hotter. Okay, Dallas Mavericks. Uh, Kemba Walker signs four-year... 140 million dollar contract okay i mean i've heard rumors about him going to the dallas mavericks him with uh luka Doncic and also Kristaps porzingis yeah that's like is it a championship contending team i think it's uh, they're definitely a top five top six team in the western conference i don't know if they're a championship team yet though man i feel like that would take a while for that for them to get there just because Kristaps coming back from injury luka despite him playing amazing 
the risk of a sophomore slump is still there. And regardless, he still will only be in his second year in the NBA. So, interesting take. Next up, we have uh, Chris Dunn gets extension, still loses starting job to Patrick Beverly. Yeah, I could see Chris Dunn just becoming like a really good backup point guard. I feel like that's kind of what his, what his market is these days. What team he wants to do that on, that's fine. Um, but yeah, if, if he's okay to embrace that role for the Bulls, that is a big town W, man. Just having a guy that can has that starting experience, you know, come off your bench and play 20, 25 minutes a game, that's nice. Now, Patrick Beverly is a starter. Maybe they can do a bit better than that. Uh, for the Clippers, we have Kawhi Leonard signs, but only for one year. No way. There is no way if you're Kawhi Leonard, you don't lock up a max contract, man. There's no way. Like, why take that risk on yourself? It doesn't make sense, man. No. If he goes to the Clippers, um, he's going to be fully invested in it, I would say. For the 76ers, Tobias gets the max. Jimmy Butler is offered one and says no. I think Jimmy Butler gets a max contract. And Tobias Harris, they just let him go. Because Jimmy is what this team needs. They need that veteran presence. Not saying Tobias can't be that. But I just think what Jimmy brings compared to what Tobias brings, I feel like Tobias would be easier to replace. Just get like a serviceable stretch bit like a Miritich or something like that. And that would be fine. And a lot cheaper. Uh, for the Magic, we have re-signed Vucevic to five-year deal. Trade Mo Bamba. I actually could see this one totally happen here, man. And like... It's kind of weird because for this to happen, the Magic need to find other ways to improve because Vucevic is not going to carry the team by themselves. So if they can do this and get rid of some of their other bad contracts and try to get like another star alongside Vucevic, I would say this is probably a W. Because um, just like Mo Bamba, I, I don't know, I, I feel like the Magic, they got a little taste of the playoffs and they're like, okay, we kind of got something going on here. And Mo Bamba, he's a project, guys. I don't know if the Magic are waiting, are willing to wait for that. Uh, we have uh, not, not going to happen, right? We have the New York Knicks convincing Kyrie but not Kevin Durant to sign. No, I feel like if I feel like if Kyrie goes, I, I feel like Kevin Durant has a better chance of going to the Knicks than Kyrie does. And if Kyrie commits there, then yeah, they end up getting Kevin Durant. So I feel like they get both those guys. I feel like it would be an all or nothing situation with there being a small chance of just Durant going there. Uh, for the Boston Celtics, uh, we have Terry Rozier returns on a four-year, eighty million dollar contract. I mean, if Kyrie Irving leaves and Scary Terry gets that starting spot, it's a risk. Because, yeah, he was nice when he was starting for them in the playoffs. The, the issue is, is that you kind of risk that just being like a one-time thing where it's like, yeah, he was nice, but is he like a long-term solution at that point guard spot? It's a lot of money, man, $15 million a season. Uh, then we got the, we got two more here, it looks like. No, we got three more, okay. Golden State Warriors, Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, Marcus Cousins all return. Do they have enough money to do that? Because I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that they brought all those guys back over the course of their contracts. It would cost them $1.4 billion. Uh, the NBA is still a business. I don't see that happening, man. Because, like, just spending that much money for those guys, I don't think they need to do that. Yeah, I don't think they will. I could see them getting Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson back, and that's just it. Or even, I, I could see them getting two of these three players back. You guys pick your two. Phoenix Suns, we have uh, no free agents come. Trade for Kevin Love instead. Now, they end up getting, like, the first or second pick, and they get their guy in Ja Morant. Okay, then you got Ja, Devin Booker, TJ or Josh Jackson at the three. And then you go for, you know, adventure like Kevin Love at the four with a DeAndre Ayton at the five. It's not a bad idea. I actually like the idea of Kevin Love going to the Suns. I think it gives them a nice veteran player that would help them mature quicker in the locker room. I don't know if that happens, though, man. You guys let me know. I, I like the idea of I know people have kind of argued with me on this one before. And finally, we have the Sacramento Kings. Jimmy Butler signs four years, $140 million deal. <sighs> the reason I don't see this one happening, but I don't know, man, because, like, I, I keep on going back to when Jimmy Butler was on the Timberwolves and how much he just, like, didn't get along with the Youngbloods, and that's exactly what the Kings are. They're a very young team. But at the same time, it's not like the 76ers. It's not like Ben Simmons and, uh, and uh, Joel Embiid are extremely young players either. So... I didn't really, I've never really heard about him going to the Kings. Like, this is the first I'm hearing about this even, like, being a thing. It would be fun to watch, and it would give them just, like, that wing player they need out there. And then all of a sudden, you have De'Aaron, Buddy, Jimmy, Marvin Bagley, whoever else out there. Sure, why not? As right here, it says Harrison Barnes at the four, Marvin at the five. I don't know if I like that all that much, but who knows, man. Um, but, yeah, these were definitely interesting to look at. I hope you guys all did enjoy this video. Give me your thoughts on all these in the comment section below. Until next time, guys, be sure to drop that like. Subscribe if you're in my channel. And peace out, my friends.